running and running 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 running friends fellow Cincinnatians listeners around the world welcome to talk of the town with PG Sittenfeld I'm your host PG Sittenfeld and who is going to be the talk of the town today give us a call 513-749 one, two, three, zero. And I, I can also say, folks, we might be making radio history here today. Uh, we went to the downtown Radio One studios, as we always do, got in the elevator to go up to the Buzz 1230 AM studio. And uh, I'm currently broadcasting this show locked in the elevator at Radio One studios, probably just feet from the actual studio. So I hope the sound is translating to you all well. I've never broadcast a show while locked in an elevator before, but we're going to make magic happen today. That's what we do. I am your Cincinnati City Councilman for the next hour. Uh, I am both locked in an elevator and just here to be part of the conversation. We have a great show, as we always do. And as I so often am, I'm joined by my co-pilot, the Tamaya Denard. And she usually joins me in studio, but today she has the misfortune of being locked in an elevator shaft with me here at Radio One Studio. We, of course, also want to thank and give a shout-out to our sponsor, Celebrities, out at 7617 Reading Road in Roselawn, who helped make the show possible. I was out there just last night. The place was bumping, as it always is. I miss the man, the legend, Mad Max, DJ Mad Max himself, but we're out there. Uh, the, whole, the whole Democratic apparatus was out there, especially the birthday boy, the judge himself, Judge Fanon Rucker, celebrating him. So uh, Tamaya is not mic'd up because we don't have mics because I'm in a studio on my cell phone, or sorry, in an elevator on my cell phone. But Tamaya, if I were to give you one guess about what we're going to talk about today, what, what would you guess we'd be talking about today on Talk of the Town? Presidential. All right, Tamaya says presidential politics. Ding, ding, ding. We do have a winner with just 17 days to go, people. It is so close. Here is what I want to hear from you today. How are you feeling? Are you nervous? Are you hopeful? Who's got the momentum? Did Obama slam dunk that second debate earlier this week? Or did he just win by a little bit? How did you think Romney's performance was? And with just two and a half weeks to go, what really is going to be the difference maker today? We will find out. We want to hear all of that from you, especially talk debate. We've got a great lineup. There's going to be some, um, some logistical trickiness to actually make this work. But we should have uh, iconic actress Alfrey Woodard. Uh, who has won Grammys and Emmys and been nominated for Academy Awards and all of that. We, she should be joining us in just a few minutes. Uh, our producer, Lamont, who's in studio while we remain in this elevator shaft, is going to text to Maya so that we know when, when Alfred Woodard is on the line. We're going to get a little bit from the other side, a former Hamilton County prosecutor and former Hamilton County GOP chairman Mike Allen is going to tell us what he thought of the debate. We're also going to get into a little bit of a local issue with four-year terms. And then later in the show, we will talk with Michael Nutter, the mayor of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania will be talking with us about uh, his take from his home state and his home city as far as the presidential election goes. And I want to, want to tip off my co-pilot here, Tamaya, to make sure that uh, when Lamont texts us, that Alfred Woodard is on the line. We will be ready to go with that. You also can call at – she's ready to go? No, not ready to go. <laughs> I hope those of you at home can appreciate uh, some of the challenges that go into hosting a radio show from an elevator shaft. But, again, we are going to make this happen today. The number, again, 513-749-1230. And, uh, Lamont, though you and I can't see each other as we usually can, just cue me off when, uh, when callers call in and – we will let them have their say, and I'll start by giving my take on, on the presidential debate earlier this week. Clearly, President Obama, and I said this last time, you know, whether he was playing rope-a-dope uh, in the first debate and trying to get Romney to say some things uh, so that he could use them later, or if he was just trying to you know, lower expectations, who knows? It obviously was not the president's greatest performance, but I've said all along, this guy is Michael Jordan. He is a fourth-quarter player. So he brought it. He was absolutely a, a, different, uh, a different Barack Obama. He brought the passion. He brought the energy. And most importantly, he brought the argument. When Mitt Romney said things that weren't true, he was quick to say, you know, Governor, you can't campaign on one thing for a year and a half and then suddenly wake up and, and be promoting other, uh, other agenda and other items. So, um, you know, he brought the passion. He brought the energy. I thought it was a very winning performance. And if nothing else, uh, if nothing else, it certainly, I think, reversed the media narrative. So I have just gotten word from, uh, from the studio that Alfrey Woodard is now on. We'll cue her in, and I'm delighted to now welcome... 
to the show, the iconic actress who has done film, stage, television, acting, been nominated once for an Academy Award, for a Grammy Award, 17 times she's been nominated for Emmy Awards, four of those times she has won, also won a Golden Globe, three Screen Actors Guild Awards, a uh, legend in the acting world, and Alfred Woodard, welcome to Talk of the Town. Hey, good morning, good morning. This is the most exciting thing that's happened to me talking to you in an elevator. <laughs> it, it, I, I, I will say, we, we, we've hosted, we had Jason Alexander on the show last week, we've had governors and senators. You are, the, you are officially our first guest we have ever hosted from inside an elevator <laughs> shaft, so thank you for making history with us, Alfre Woodard. And let, let's get to the matter at hand. So what caused you, you know, you're obviously, you're out there, you're promoting the president, you're stumping for him. What caused you to be such a big believer in Barack Obama? Well, you know, I, I'll tell you, I'm still fired up from the last time out in 2008. I, I am so excited about and appreciative of all the progress that this president has made on behalf of all Americans. And so I'm getting everybody charged up and saying we've got to protect that progress. We have to protect uh, the, the Affordable Health Care Act. We have to protect all the gains made for women and for working Americans and for the middle class because the guys that are trying to, to come back through and kick up all the progress that's been made, they have no solutions. They can't even add, the, their math doesn't add up. So, and they also think of women as small matters. They, they talk about women's pay equity as a small matter. And Bind, women binders help. full of women, I guess, is, is how they think of them. Uh, binders, and that's supposed to be a compliment. He probably meant that as a compliment. But, you know, <laughs> the president doesn't need a binder full of women because he has smart, capable women all around him. It's in his DNA to recognize us, and that's what he's been doing all along. And it's not just women because if you uplift women, you uplift the whole family, brothers. And when you uplift families, you uplift the whole nation. Well, I, I think you raised such a good point that it really is important to drive home because the president would be the first person to say, the economy is not where it's going to end up. It's not where we want it to be in the end, but that there has been progress these last four years. We've passed the Affordable Care Act. We've expanded Pell Grants for students. We've you know, passed the Lilly Ledbetter Act. So I think drilling home that message that this president does have a record to run on, he should be proud of that. He does, and right now the good news here in Ohio is that unemployment has dropped to 7%. It's dropped even lower than, than last month. And so he has put into place everything to make this economy grow. But anybody that has ever planted a garden, PG, they would know you don't plant a garden expecting you're going to have salad that by the weekend. Everything is in place. It's taken root and it's growing. And so the people that are still um, are, don't have jobs, we're just saying hang in there until you do. There is all this relief that, that we are making available for you. But it is not that dire thing that we're still sliding. We're, we're crawling back up out of the death, out of right. off the brink. So. So things are looking better, and all the progress that we have made, we have to ensure it by giving Barack Obama another four years. We, we are talking with acclaimed actress, Alfre Woodard. It's a delight to have her on the show today. And you've been um, outspoken on a number of political topics. Have you always been sort of politically involved and politically inclined, or is this somewhat new territory for you? No, you know, I started walking precincts with my parents when I was 10 years old in Tulsa, wow, Oklahoma. Wow. And, uh, you know, I think I started, you know, doing the social activism around 14 because, you know, I was, a, I was a young female of color, you know, at a certain point in this country's history. And, and I saw people get the right to vote. So I vote for even those, those really boring elections about, you know, the reservoir and which way the water is going to go because it was a time that the whole community turned out all over, t all over Tulsa. People were knocking on doors. That's where you saw your neighbors. It was, it was being an American. It was, be it was creating community. And so I, I never let an election go by that I don't, you know, join in. And I, basically what I'm doing here today is I feel like I'm continuing that precinct walk and neighbor to neighbor, talking to people and really being here encouraging you guys because Right now, you're, you're the most vital neighbor the whole country has. Oh, oh coming Ohio down is Ohio. absolutely the center of the universe. And I don't know yes. who could say no to Alfred Woodard when she encourages people to vote, vote, vote. So you've been, and you've been politically early. active for a very long time. Now, as I mentioned in, in sort of introducing you, uh, not that you need any introduction. I mean, you have been, you've either won or been nominated for more awards, ranging from Academy Awards to Golden Globes to Grammys and on and on and on. Did you always know you wanted to be an actress? No, I never wanted to be an actor until probably I was um, 15, 
and a nun, Sister Rachel Lynn, uh, convinced me to be in a play uh, because she knew that I memorized things really well and somebody had dropped out. So <laughs> I, I could memorize all the lines by the weekend is how I got started. But, um, yeah, so, I no, it was... But the thing that I, the thing about acting that I discovered, uh, when I discovered it is that, is that it is extensions of storytellers throughout when man first stood up on two feet around the fire. Um, there have been those storytellers and, and we are extensions of that. And when you, when you're telling people stories, I feel like that's for the health of the community, just like the affordable health care is for all communities. But when you stand up, you, you have to care about where your stories land. And so right. that's an extension of my of my activism. I can't I can't tell stories. I can't come into people's living rooms every night while they're sitting there after a long day's work or looking for work to tell them a story and not care about the fact that their children don't have access to to a, a, a workable education and they don't have access to higher education. So that's how you you, you get connected. It's impossible, I think, for an artist not to be active because they're making art for community, for human beings, and they have to carry through on that. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I was really excited about I want to get into today is that you guys are so lucky. I'm out in California. Usually we're waiting. By the time we even get off work, every right. election is decided. So it's, it's exciting to be able to come and tell people, my goodness, you have this utopian situation. You can go and vote right now. You can vote anytime. You can vote the weekend before the election. So I'm just, I, I, I would just drive home the point to everybody that, first of all, the process is going to go on with or without you. You, you can't let other people make your decisions because it is no, your... No question. Yeah. Uh, so, Alfred, yeah. Did, did, would you, I, I know you're keeping a very busy schedule. We appreciate you joining us on the airwaves and in the elevator this morning. Would you <laughs> hang on for a couple commercials and we'll just a couple more questions on the other side? Sure. With that, we, we will be right back. You're listening to Talk of the Town with PG on 1230 the Buzz, Cincinnati. Hey, we are talking with acclaimed Alfrey Woodard. Really appreciate her hanging on for just a couple more questions. And Alfrey, one thing I did want to ask you because you've been an outspoken leader on a number of things. You know, I think there were at our most hopeful moments. You know, the President Obama was going to usher us into a post-racial world. Obviously, um, you know, this is not something that gets solved overnight. There's been, there's been some gridlock in Washington. But what's your sense today of, of where the country is in terms of race? And what's been this president's impact on, on the country's understanding of race? Well, I don't think that uh, – I don't know who said that this was ushering in a post-racial world. I mean, anybody that, uh, has, you know, has grown up and thinking – uh, sure, sure. would understand that it's much too deep a thing to happen. It's not magic. And just like change isn't magic, you got to show up for it. But I think one of the things that has been great about it, you know, this was a historic presidency, not because, to me, because he was African American, but for the first time we had somebody who went across all kinds of uh, divisional lines and with the same message, and that is we're all in this together. And so I think that was a historic thing, is that we got a person at the moment we needed it to get the country on its feet and start to heal. But a byproduct was that he was a man of color. And so there's been time, it's been good that the, uh, the issue of race has, has come up in the country's dialogue uh, over the past four years. But we, we still need to talk about it. People get so nervous about it. The thing is, we are all actually DNA related to each other. Sure. Uh, but we, we make such a big deal about it. And I think we do that because we don't accept our history. Slavery, it was only just a little while ago. It was just yesterday. But black people don't want to talk about it. White people say, I wasn't there. I didn't have to do it with black people. Like, that depresses me. And so it's like, it's like denying part of your body. And I think we'll remain um, dysfunctional as a nation until we accept it. It doesn't mean we... You know, looking at it, talking about it, accepting it, because, I mean, the reason we have superpower is that we had 300 years of unpaid labor. I mean, we have to accept that because a lot of the manifestations of slavery are the very problems that, are, that seem to be entrenched and insurmountable. It's because we're not looking at what, what led us to this point. But I think the more we talk about it, um, it's, it's, you know, talking about race and the fact, because we can talk about it because we're all mixed race, frankly, uh, that, that have been in this country, the new immigrants are not, but 
Um, I, I think um, I think it, it exposed the people. I think what happens is they get so the reason there's so much antagonism in the air is people don't want to accept that we all have we all have to fight against racist ten, racist tendencies against one one, 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 one. I, I in our agree. own minds. Right. Well, I mean, one, one thing I've said a million times is, you know, people, I think, have, it, it's fair game if folks want to disagree with the president's policies. But I think the power of, of him and the first lady as role models in the White House, that no matter what you think of, of, of his agenda, I mean, loving husband, you know, she's such a powerful mother and leader. I mean, that I, I really can't imagine two more just dignified, um, you know, phenomenal role models to have for the country. So I think that's been a great gift. One, one, the final thing I wanted to ask you about, I know, like the president, you've also been supportive of, of marriage equality. And I know that after the president sort of announced his, his personal support for marriage equality, there was talk that a number of African-American pastors were going to say, well, we're not going to support him. And to me, it seems like that's very much fizzled out. And actually, I've seen polling number polling numbers that, you know, within the African-American community, on the heels of the president's endorsement, support for marriage equality has actually gone up double digits and even more in many cases. What, what do you think of that stance that he took? Well, you know, I, I, have, I have seen numbers that it's up as much as 70 percent for marriage equality in yep, the African-American yep. church. And you know what? I think it's a matter of language, the way it is always, uh, I think, in these issues that seem to divide us. And I don't think there's any African-American spiritual person that does not understand equality. Right. And, and so when you put it that way, people were able to say, all right. And then we had African-American, some great African-American leaders uh, in the clergy who would say, okay, and then scripturally, let, let me show you how we can back this up. Let me show you this. So it was, again, just having that dialogue. But everybody was stuck on marriage. But marriage, everybody, is, I think marriage is whatever you decide it's going to be. But everybody was stuck on marriage, uh, but, and so that. But once we were able to, to get over that hump, one of the things that I've always felt about um, the African American church is that, you know, we we are family. We're family people, especially people that are in church, and then we want to turn to one of our children who we've loved and supported, and everybody thinks it's right, so great, right. and just one day say, "No, you don't exist." You know. We are not that kind of people. These are, these are not aliens. These are our children. And I think it was one of the reasons that, frankly, uh, the down low, you know, has uh, sort of scathed through our community in terms of the HIV uh, situation is because we weren't allowing people to be the human beings. We weren't allowing our children to be uh, the human beings they are. Of course they want to be in families now because that's who we are. We're family people. And so... I'm just I'm so glad that we are opening up and that the sunlight and that and that the, the gospel of love that that's the um, Jesus the Christ true uh, spirit and message is coming through in the hearts of a lot of African American clergy and churches. Right, right. Well, Al Alfred Woodard, thank you for your passion and your advocacy and. Thank you for being so graceful as we uh, host the show from an elevator today. We really, we really appreciate everything you're doing for the president, and uh, come, come visit us when you're in Cincinnati. Oh, I will, and everybody vote early. It's amazing. And, and, and I also wanted to tell you that Tamaya Denard, who is uh, my right-hand woman and usually is the co-pilot for the show, but we can only, only take up one line, is, is one of your biggest fans. So she says to tell you she, she loves you and uh, she's one of, your, one of your biggest fans. Oh, darling, thank you so much. All right. Thank you very okay. much to Alfred Woodard for joining us today.